Hey everybody, I'm Christina Etter and I'm the Editorial Content Director at CannabisTech.com. Now, you might recognize me from my other podcast called A Tech Moment, and in there we interview people that are business leaders in the cannabis space and the experts that are really kind of behind the scenes in the industrial cannabis world. But at the end of this year, we started looking at our statistics and we realized that our consumer technology was getting almost as much traffic as our industrial technology. So we wanted to start some content to address you, our cannabis consumer tech readers. We also want you to know that we aren't just tech geeks who write about cannabis. We don't hire another firm to create our content. We do all of this ourselves. In fact, we're real people. This is my husband, Gary. Hey. So we just wanted to let you know that we are completely vested in the cannabis space. And well, we just happen to be geeks that love technology too. Technologies make our life easier and safer in so many ways. And so at Cannabis Tech, we have started to work with a variety of companies to highlight some of the gadgets and technology and devices that are available to cannabis consumers to help make life a little bit easier for us. Now, we're gonna be highlighting technologies that are available to the home grower, the DIY edible maker, cannabis consumers in general. Now, from putting the seed in the soil all the way to producing the finished product, we're going to show you the entire process as we experience it ourselves right here in our own living room. So I want to send a ton of gratitude, first of all, to Green Goddess Supply for actually sending us the tent to get this video series started. The first step to creating a quality product is having quality cannabis. And so with technology like this ATS42 from Green Goddess Supply, we're hoping to grow a good quality cannabis crop using the technology that's inside. And we're going to get to all of that here in just a second. Now, we're going to give you regular updates as we go. You can follow along as our, can as our plants grow, and we're going to share all of our stumbling blocks and the lessons that we have along the way. And my husband's probably going to stop in once in a while with some shorts and some videos to just kind of keep you up to date on what's going on with the plants inside the tent. So we want to start this series talking about how to grow cannabis at home and the types of technologies that are available for home growers. And of course, we're starting it out with this ATS 42 tent that we have received from Green Goddess Supply. Now, this isn't just a tent. It's an all-inclusive grow system with absolutely everything that you need to get started growing high quality cannabis at home. But first, with the legal industry growing as fast as it is, let's review some of those benefits of actually growing your own cannabis. There are a number of reasons why you might want to grow your own cannabis at home and indoors. So let me tell you a few of the reasons why we want to grow cannabis indoors. First of all, you get to control the variables. You know that your plants do not have pesticides, that they don't have any added chemicals. Everything that you grow at home, you can control, especially when you're growing it inside. When you're growing it outside, if your neighbor's using True Green or if you're living in an agricultural or a rural area, there's a good chance that your plants could become contaminated with pesticides. So by having a tent indoors where you can control your system a little bit better, it gives you more control over your plants. Then of course you have the weather to deal with if you're growing outdoors as well. So here in the mountains of Colorado we have a pretty short growing season. It can be done outdoors but we want to grow more than just one season. So by setting up a tent inside the house we can control the variables, we can control the environment, and we can grow all year round. We used to grow outdoors, but I'll tell you what, it didn't take very long for the chipmunks to figure out how to get into our greenhouse either. <laughs> Once they destroyed our cannabis crop for the second year in a row, we decided that growing outdoors was probably not our best option here. 
And then of course, there's always the money savings. When you're growing at home, there's a lot less cost involved than there is if you're going to a dispensary or going to an illicit uh, dealer. There's just a lot less expense, a lot less worry. Plus you don't have to pay taxes on plants that you grow at home. So therefore you can save a little bit of money there too. Now with these plants, we're hoping to get a new crop every 60 to 75 days. And if they come to fruition the way that we hope that they do, that should provide us a significant amount of cannabis for the two of us easily indoors by growing all year round. Plus then we get to choose which plants we grow and we get to choose how we process them in the end. Now, the final thing that I wanna mention about growing at home is there's a little bit of pride involved. You know, Ed Rosenthal told us that growing cannabis can become addictive. And he's right. You know, when you see those sprouts come up out of the ground, you take a little bit of pride in the fact that you have these plants that you're growing at home. So there's pride involved with gardening your own cannabis. So why did we choose the ATS 42? One, well, that was because Green Goddess wanted to work with us on this podcast and they had the tent available, of course. But the other side of this is, is that previously, before technology like this came along, legacy growers battled the plant's legal status. And they often pieced together elaborate systems, not only to grow their cannabis, but to conceal it, because obviously they didn't want everybody in the world to know that they were growing an illegal plant. However, now that the laws are finally changing and more and more people are able to grow cannabis at home, companies like Green Goddess Supply are putting together these complete systems so novice growers like us don't have to play guessing games about which equipment to buy or what works well with the other. They've done all the research for us. The equipment has been tested as a system by the experts at Green Goddess Supply, and they are confident that as long as you follow their grow growing protocol, which they'll step you through, you'll have a quality cannabis crop in 60 to 75 days with plants producing as much as a quarter pound per plant. So in this video series, we are following Green Goddess's suggestions to the T. We are checking in with them on a weekly basis. We're letting them see our setup. We're asking them all of the information that they have to help us ensure that we're gonna have a good quality crop. Now, I don't get this service just because I'm a journalist or because I'm working with them. This is provided to everybody for a year when you buy your tent from Green Goddess Supply. So this whole concierge service is here to help you kind of get over some of those learning curves and challenges that you run into when you first start growing cannabis. Or even if you are an expert at cannabis and you start to have some issues or you're not sure what is happening with your plant, the concierge service is there to help. So this slide shows exactly how this system was shipped to us. It came in two boxes and I won't lie, the boxes were a little bit dinged up when they got here, like they typically are in shipping, um, but nothing inside was damaged. It all shipped great. And all of the pieces and parts that you need to put this tent together are inside these two boxes. And I mean, absolutely everything. The only thing that you have to buy in addition to your tent is the soil, the seeds, and the water that you're going to need to water your plants. So it really is a complete system. So naturally we have to first talk about the tent all put together. It was super simple. The canvas is incredibly rugged and sturdy. It really does have a very high quality appearance and feel to it. Now, and I know this is just aesthetics, but it's also nice that it has the embroidered logo on there, that it's not just some screen printed logo that's gonna peel off over time. You know, it just looks quality. And so for that reason, I don't mind having it set up right here in my living room where everybody's gonna walk through. So let's take a look at the whole process. Naturally, we've sped this up, put it on time lapse because nobody wants to spend 20 minutes watching me and my husband unbox a grow tent and put together these poles. But you know, one of the things that you're gonna notice is that once we had it all unboxed and we laid the poles out on the floor, it was incredibly easy to piece this thing together. We were so impressed with the fact that you needed no tools. The poles just kind of snap together and they have a little plug that just pops in place and poof, you're done. Laying the canvas out on the floor helped a lot too. So obviously having a, a nice big living room here helps. Uh, but once we laid that canvas out, 
it just wraps up around the frame and then zips close. We were also super impressed with the sizing of the tent. So just for scale, we took this picture and stood inside the tent to show you how much room there actually is. Now my husband's a six foot tall, pretty big guy, and we all fit inside this tent pretty nicely. There's gonna be plenty of room for your plants. So once the tent was complete, now we have to add in all of the other technology that goes inside and actually helps the cannabis plants grow. Now I will admit, I didn't record this segment either, just because I wanted to make sure that I knew where everything went and I didn't look stupid on the video, but it went together a lot easier than I thought. We did call Kyle the concierge and talk to him for a little bit just to make sure that we had things in the right place and we were good to go. So some of the other components that come with this tent include the exhaust fan, which ventilation is absolutely critical for your plants. You need to make sure that you have airflow in there. This also came with a nice big carbon scrubber. And so this is basically going to help make sure that you're not pumping a bunch of cannabis odor, not that some of us would mind, but so you're kind of keeping the smell contained within the tent and cleared out before it pumps that exhaust out into your house. Of course it came with the lights and we're going to talk about these a little bit in more detail in just a couple of minutes and then there's other pieces and parts that that it comes with so you get your fans you get the winches to help control the you know the height of your lights there are the cloth pots down to a timer even they even send the uv sunglasses that you need to be able to look inside the tent safely with the lights on and make sure that you're not damaging your eyes Okay, so let's talk about the lights now, because this is obviously one of the most critical pieces of technology in a cannabis grow, because your lights have to be able to mimic the, sun's, the sunshine. This system doesn't come with just one light, it actually comes with two Unicorn Series LED lights. And what this does is it allows you to have one light for each plant, so then you can kind of tweak things depending on how that plant's doing. And with the four winches that are on there, you can even set them at an angle or turn them a little bit, so then that way they aren't, um, <clears throat> you know, if your plants need a little different lighting, you have the ability to make that adjustment. Now Green Goddess Supply calls these a 13 spectrum low heat proprietary light and they help to deter pests and molds and fungus because of the spectrum of lighting that they use. Obviously in a grow tent inside, you're not gonna have to worry about bugs too much unless of course your pets bring them in and you need to be concerned about that, especially if you have a dog that likes to go out and roll around. So just make sure that you're watching your plants for pests even though you're growing inside. Um, but we always have to be concerned about molds and funguses. A grow tent and a grow space is just naturally prone to these types of pests and they can, have, they can wreak havoc. So you need to make sure that you're watching out for those. But with the Green Goddess Grow Tent, it helps deter those kinds of things from happening. Now the winches just simply click into the corners of the lights and they're pretty easy to hang up once we kind of figured out where everything went. Um, once they were hung, we just had to adjust those winches, get everything leveled out, and you know, it all went together pretty easily. Okay, now we are ready for soil. We've got the tent together, we've got all the components, we've tested the lighting to make sure that our schedule is going to work. We've done everything that we need to do for this. So, now it's time to put the soil in the containers. And based on recommendations from Green Goddess, we did go purchase the Fox Farms uh, ocean forest soil for our plants. It's organic, it's enriched with fish and kelp, and the soil has all the nutrients necessary for our plants to grow properly. Now, per Kyle's instructions, we also took one extra step and we dumped all of the soil into a container and added water into that and mixed it into the soil before we put it into the pots. You want to make sure that that soil is good and moist and that it has, you know, that it's ready for your seed when she starts to sprout. All right, we have done absolutely everything that we need to do up to this point. We have our tent set up, the dirt is prepped and ready to go. The next step is simply putting that seed in the ground. And we'll talk more about specifics around this particular cultivar and the seeds that we're using, as well as the importance of choosing those right seeds in, that, in our next episode. But for today, we're just gonna tell you we are growing a 
a cultivar named Black Strap, and this is a feminized seed from the autoflowerstore.com. Black Strap is a joint project between Gnome Automatics and Brother Mendel Selections. A 50 50 hybrid, this cultivar is going to grow with some purple hues, and this is one of the reasons why we wanted to grow this particular strain. And it's going to have a nice, strong, spicy bakery smell to it, so the sweet aroma isn't going to hurt either. Now, with these colors, we are so looking forward to having a really super visually appealing cannabis plant for this video podcast. Now, when it comes to actually putting the seed in the soil, make sure that you wear protective gloves over your hands. Your bare hands have oils and contaminations that could impact the growth of your plant. So just make sure that you're keeping things clean for the sake of your plant's health. Now, as Kyle explained it to me, you just barely want to boop your finger down into the soil to give it a little divot for that seed to sit in. Barely cover it up, just give it a light covering over the top. And then from there on out, you just want to check on it once a day, giving it a tablespoon or so of water to get that plant to germinate. During this time, you're going to want to have your light set to five to eight inches above your soil. And check on it every day shortly after the lights come on that's when you're going to want to give it its little drink of water um, because that's its morning time and that's when it's going to need that drink so make sure that you're checking on it every day and oh by the way don't use your tap water there are chemicals and things in there that aren't good for your plant so just go to the store buy yourself some purified water and use purified water for your plant your your plant will thank you for it so while we're talking about lighting schedules, let's talk about this. One of the reasons that you have a grow tent is so you can provide the ideal conditions for your plants to thrive by mimicking the natural outdoor conditions in nature. Sunlight doesn't shine for 24 hours a day in nature and therefore it probably shouldn't in your tent either. Now, some people will argue that during certain stages, 24 hours of light won't hurt the plant, but if you're really wanting to mimic the natural lighting outside, you're gonna to wanna to have a timing schedule. Now, in this case, the seeds that we got from the Autoflower Store website, this plant actually prefers an 18 hour on, six hour off schedule. Now, here's a hint. Your plants don't have little watches. They don't know what time it is. They just know when the light's there and when the light's not. So you can set your schedule to whatever suits you best. Now we have our timers set to come on at 8, 10 at night and run overnight. And there's a couple of reasons why we've chosen to do this. First of all, here in the mountains, we have cold winters and propane isn't cheap. <laughs> we keep our house pretty cool overnight and we want our plants to stay warm so by running the lights overnight it's going to keep that tent warm it's going to keep the environment warmer for the plants and therefore we don't have to worry about them getting a little chill overnight because we keep our house cooler than most people do <laughs> secondly and this should be on everybody's mind is you don't want to increase your electric bill that much so if you do a little research and i most electric companies do this there's peak times of electric use and during those peak times they typically charge more for electricity now we know that our peak hours are between the hours of four and eight so in order to help save on electricity that's when we have our plants shut down actually our electric company charges us double for the kilowatts that we use between those hours so by having the light shut off then we don't have to worry about those kinds of things and hopefully we're not going to see much of an increase on our electric bill so these are a couple of things that you might want to have in the back of your mind as well in terms of how to do this the most efficient way for your grow. So our seeds went in the ground on January 1st, just for ease. That way we can count the dates really easy and know how many days they've been in the soil. Now, since they've only been in the soil for a couple of days, we don't have any sprouts to show you yet, but I'm sure we will by our next episode, which by the way is coming up on the 20th of this month. We're gonna try to do this every two weeks. Each two weeks, we're gonna talk about something new in the grow. So next week, we're gonna talk about autoflowers and why we're choosing to go with an autoflower strain and why we're growing in soil. So make sure that you come 
come back for that. Also, don't forget to check out our channel. My husband's gonna be posting some videos, some short videos to keep you up to date on those sprouts as they grow and so you can see our progress as we go along. And I'm gonna encourage you to get engaged as well. Do you want some recognition for your grow? Send us your pictures, send us your grow, tell us what you're growing, and I might throw your pictures into the next podcast and we'll talk about what you're doing too. Send me an email, but thanks for following and don't forget, we're gonna be back on January 20th to talk more about the grow, what's going on inside those seeds in the soil. We'll see you in a couple weeks.